Hello, one and Adderall. Bone Works is a VR shooter extravaganza developed by Stress Level Zero, containing experimental <laughs> physics and combat everybody loves, not including the swords. In this game, dogs do not exist, so the gun is man's best friend. You may point out the rats roaming the street, but those are target practice, as any other entity in this game is. In this installment of the Half-Life series, you play as Arthur Ford, a rogue security director of a company that toyed with the abyss in the 1990s with the goal of becoming a god. Assuming you have a computer with about the same power as anything that can run cyberpunk these days and any good headset, you're good to go. I ran this on Windows Mixed Reality, so I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel and still had a very good time. Sources? Trust me, bro. Okay, so, uh, small editor's note, anti-aliasing, I'm just gonna recommend if you ever play this, uh, keep it off. That's all I really want to say. Gameplay. This game's mechanics are very simple. Guns are guns, you load them dynamically, and they respond accordingly. This includes recoil, aiming, and all other fun stuff. Your body is physical, real, and looks like you've been paralyzed from the waist down while climbing. The time trial and zombie warehouse are just the John Wick DLC, so I can save some time on covering that. There's not much more to explain, so let's get into the fun! The museum shows off tech you could have had if you were Bill Gates himself. Bam, 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 bam. This includes the equivalent of Google Cardboard. Boneworks takes advantage of a full body model as well, meaning you can lift yourself over ledges using only your arms. However, your legs are an independent physics object in this game. Therefore, full body tracking is not part of the game. This is assuming you could afford the technology to begin with. Full body tracking only works well in games like VR chat. <laughs> After this is a Home Depot demo in which we are set loose amongst multiple wooden objects with a sledgehammer. Ooh, you want to build a shed. <laughs> Next is a puzzle where you make a platform go up, jump, jump onto, onto a platform, platform that goes down, go all the way back up, and then get on the elevator and go up. I cheated my way out of that puzzle with no remorse. On the second floor is a showcase of our inventory, in which we have two slots over our back for heavier equipment, two on the side for pistols and knives, and the old reliable, also known as the prison pocket, directly following the inventory show off is a gun range. This is a bad idea, as you are giving me power I really shouldn't have in VR to begin with. There is also a small melee weapon showcase. After this is a showcase of advanced physics rooms. First up is one one that makes you feel like you are legally on crack cocaine. In the center of this exhibit is what I like to call a simulador de US border, in which we direct a small little ball across a city landscape as a box tries to put it on the other side. This is totally not a form of foreshadowing in any way, shape, or form. The last thing in the museum that I count interesting is the gravity well, in which we use a toy balloon gun to lift a platform up and jump across and be floated to the other side and into the gift shop. That's quite a way of marketing if you ask me. Our only way to go from here is through the recycling area in which we fall down a trash chute. Finally, the tutorial is over. Hey, yo, the pizza here. What it hey. Is. So, ah. hey. If I'm not crying by the time I'm redoing this whole level after making the rest of the video, I would like to tell you about Portland, Oregon. I'm gonna try to make it simple. If there's anything this game got right, it's that there's homeless bodies everywhere. It's a good, uh portrayal of Portland. You see, in the streets of Chicago, everybody has been evacuated due to the spread of Ligma. I peacefully protest these events by destroying property and taking down the Berlin Wall, going through more puzzles and parkour courses of various size and design. Parkour courses are far worse than the puzzles though, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, they're just kind of a pain to finish. Uh, and if you can, try to find some workaround solution to them, I, I highly suggest that. The design of this level is the most open one, making it feel authentic and actually like a city, with only one feature hinted at the back in the museum only being functional in this level. This is our first true encounter with the Nolmen, who appear to be deviating towards murderous tendencies from their normal intents of being uh, labor workers of the virtual city. There is a small encounter with the cleanup crew of the game, but nothing too serious. Uh, 
Uh, the next level is, though. This one is just kind of a warm-up for the rest of the game. And I'm coming! The runoff level is the brainchild of a Call of Duty player in Bath Salts. A short and sweet level consisting of nothing but pure John Wick bullshit magic beyond the garbage disposal area and puzzle. If you thought the streets of Tampa, Florida made us a hard baller, you're just dead fucking wrong. This level is non-stop, nonsensical chaos killing. Runoff takes you through the sewer systems of Mytho West City, and initiating our true redneck spirit, we shoot anything that decides to try and escape the Hick Doom Slayer. The first few gutters are relatively simple, spawning enemies that we easily turn into fucking Swiss cheese. Just don't enter that one doorway! In the second half of the level comes two small puzzles that would be just as hard to solve if I already had a lobotomy. It's always nice to stop by and do a little trolling to my enemies and the Epson projector people. This level is what is the culmination of battle in this game, apart from a level further down the line, put into a closed space like a fucking lab rat. There was another puzzle trying to teach you how to use gravity, but I say no to drugs and yes to jumping fences and trespassing like a cool kid. Skipping puzzles is half intended by stress level zero, and due to the open consistency of a fucking Euro European street. We only need to be built stupid and killer to get the job done. Over the fence is where the absolute slaughter of the Tangerine army happens in a montage that is very cool guys, please trust me. Rest in chaos. Using a slip and slide to discover the once dormant and now awoken Skype user. Hey guys, it's me, Gamer1205 here. Today we're gonna be looking at funny tactics. Ooh, take your pills, Arthur. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, 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 you know what? Uh, I, uh, I left my keys in my house. Be, uh, be right back. The last obstacle we go over is the kitchen of Amber Heard, because it's full of shit. That concludes runoff, unfortunately. But we have been called to go clean the pipes of New York City for now. The sewer level is a strange one, albeit because half of it is a maze, and the other half is because it's slimy and smelly. Early into the level, we pass by a drainage area and encounter a new face. So you're going to reset the great alarm clock. I've always dreamed of that possibility, yet you beat me to it. Just back up my personal homework folder as a form of compensation for our efforts. Back it up and you'll receive something greater in return. Moving ahead, if we take a small detour, we find one of the best melee weapons in the game, the Glorious Frying Pan. This pan is possibly the most overpowered melee weapon in the entire game, while also sounding just like the Taco Bell bong. Now we jump on down to witness the fact that my mods in the background of this video broke naturally spawning guns, and I had to spawn new ones in. I got the pro strats of a certain true gamer. There are night vision gog there are night vision goggles that I oh my gosh. There are night vision goggles that I temporarily use to film the next Matrix title. Matrix, Tunnels of New York. I'm I'm gonna get hunted down for that one, aren't I? After passing through multiple tunnels that reek of last week's American diet, we enter the area I love to nickname the Pit. Letting out the true church bells in our soul with physical strength, our next obstacle is a bridge. Now, there are multiple tunnels branching off in different directions. One leads to another gun, the other leads to somewhere I never cared to explore in this recording, and the right leads me to my best position. Taking out the initial zombies from afar, we jump down, only to discover it's a crab nest. From here, I could have gone one of two ways, and you can tell. This game gives the player a, a lot of freedom when choosing their path. One is the default path for the casual player, and the left is a different roundabout path. I chose the roundabout one, because it was the first first time I ever noticed it myself in this recording, so I looked for a way to get in. Uh... The tunnel itself contains zombies, and by now you have probably noticed, the night vision goggles are gone. We 
been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Remember the joke in the streets level about the crypto farms? Yeah, those were running on a Dell Optiplex. These are the ultimate NVIDIA PTX Gigafard 9000 edition, able to mine at 12 miles a cucumber. We finish this route by heading towards the exit of the sewers level, and the last room is oh my gosh. At the end of the level, I began to realize I liked it more than I initially assumed. It's fun, but dark and stressful without the matrix shield strapped to your forehead. The use of crablets was great, made me think they were sewer bugs half the time. It only fueled my hatred to get rid of them even more, and was a great motivator. Our only way out of this level, as any other level is through another large tunnel door and man was tossing a frying pan down a slippery tube one of the funniest things i've seen in a while hi how are you super oh brother this guy Yo guys, it's Mouse on the Screen recording gaming here. Uh, hang on a second. Hello, base department. Yeah, hey man, I'm not feeling too good. Do you think you could cover me for this level in specific? Nah. Uh, okay. Warehouse is one of the most iconic scenes in Boneworks, not because you get to raid the stash of Amazon, but because of the way player freedom is presented. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody's freaking out over here. Uh, apparently somebody, somebody from security told us that there's been a breach in myth and that uh, someone's running around like crazy right now. We sure wonder who that is. I don't trust them though. Once you set the the time on the clock to 420, I'm sure things will be fine. We'll figure out what's going on. The level is laid in a way that you are meant to go clockwise around the warehouse, sliding a bridge into place, and then grabbing a battery that can be used to open the front door. However, there are other ways to deal with the warehouse. After a ton of re-recording, you can see that you could get the battery and skip the bridge, or you could go to the bridge and skip the battery. You can climb in through the front window, you can jump onto the side of the warehouse and skip half of what's in there. The possibilities are endless. What if I also told you you don't need to do the warehouse at all? You can climb onto the roof and jump across the wall with no effort. You could take this strange yet difficult route to shimmy along with the agility of a freaking Michael Jackson to the other side. You get my point. Player freedom is a big part of why people love this level. This time I entered through a window and got stuck fighting the uh, entire menu of Red Lobster with one hand. Lobster Fest has something for every lobster fan. My Windows controller decided to uh, go to sleep before I could reboot it and finish the job. Fuck you. After crossing the wall, I don't actually remember which way I did it by now, we come across a nice and wholesome little parliament meeting. I just woke up now, fuck you, Steven. Past this is a single crablet and a nice ending to a really short level. Finishing the warehouse segment, we get caught in a shootout against more of the Tangerine team before leaving on a train, going. Central Station is the most detailed scene in the entire game. This level is the equivalent to the 40-year-old mom who puts too many pillows on a couch. There are still plenty of optional paths with either ammo dumps or useful bits and pieces. This specific portion has you put a key in the doorway, go into a tunnel, and then lift up the gate in the central hall. So about being linear, I skip half of that nonsense. Sorry, you can't skip your fare. Shut up. <laughs> you're going to be able to do, unless you don't care at all about being found after hitting the snooze button. You can't do that. The system is all ours. 
skipping part of the level in the style of Clint Eastwood and jumping across a gap to open a big door of an unmentionable worry. We get to take another small train ride. The latter half of the level consists of the inner workings of the Great Pyramid, as if they gave a bunch of toddlers crayons and a blue paper and asked for the plans to a pizza hut. In layman's terms, why would you give children their food and expect a working product in return? This time I took the safest route possible, which included burning my legs from crouching and a lot of Metal Gear Solid style gameplay, sneaking around through air ducts and using a weapon. If you avoid vents for the most part, watermelon. The tunnels are interconnected through keys you find throughout, but it won't matter by the time you finish the level. One chamber contained my worst nightmare and is what felt like a cyberpunk version of a Half-Life level. And the last one is just the exit chamber before heading onto my actual favorite level. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Tower is the ultimate level to Boneworks combat and teaches you that you will probably need to get your adrenaline glands into overdrive to be able to survive the Blue Man Group and the IRS. In here, you ascend through three, three floors of enemies, grabbing more keys and, expectedly, shoving them into more holes. So hello and welcome to hell. Hey, hey, yeah, um, I know you're having fun and all, but the Nolmen are pulling things off of the clock. Uh, you should probably hurry up here. Uh, just a bit of advice, you know. Good luck to you out there. What the dog doing? Oh. I'm dead. Ah. I suck. This is the time tower you are meant to reset. Before the battle begins, you can buy guns and the dev tools, which will give you the upper hand in battle. If you've managed to save all of your ammo in some weird way that isn't cheating your save file, I highly recommend the gravity gun and the power puncher. Trust me, it's worth the investment from personal experience. Baba Bowie. This section is just you waking up in a dungeon and is a schizophrenic nightmare of quite literal self reflection. This is a setup for you to fight zombies in what is, quite frankly, the worst aspect of this game's combat, slicing with swords. Here's why slicing with swords does not work. It just doesn't work. Stabbing is your best bet, as well as blunt force trauma, before finally being able to fight yourself in a 1v1 in the throne room. Throne Room is the grand and spectacular end to Boneworks' campaign, if I can even call it that. King Arthur has invited you over for a nice picnic. And challenges you to a fist fight. 
Unfortunately, he refuses to take seats, instead destroying them, even though I was kindly generous enough to grab them from the room over. Our best bet to defeating him, though, is just by headbutting and a lot of bloody knuckles and going to the dance with him. Hey, yeah, look, um, I found you in the real world. You're kind of screwed. A final testament to your willpower, this game has you sacrifice your biceps and forearms for about three minutes to a homage of something very familiar to uh, many good classic gamers. To conclude this nonsensical video, I rate Boneworks on my personal scale an 8.5 out of 10. It's wonderful as a VR title, but the combat and the story need a little tweaking. Bone Lab is the sequel to this game, and it's supposedly gonna be a lot better with actual mod support in the game. Until then, stay tuned, my friends.